during the pandemic, um, social support as well as financial and emotional support um, has been lacking for a lot of families. For example, we know that about that grandparents have spent about 90% less time doing childcare uh, than they do usually. Mm -hmm. um, and so families who've been reliant, and it's quite often low income families who are reliant on informal childcare, will be finding that much more difficult in lockdown, particularly, of course, because they don't want to put the older people in their families at risk. So the particular thing during the pandemic has been that whilst it's been very welcome that universal credit uh, and working tax credit have been put up by £20 a week, Mm -hmm. That was a flat rate increase. So it was the same for a single person and it was the same for a couple and it was the same for a family with one, two, three or more children. And so families with children have relatively been disadvantaged by that additional help. Um, and so it's been more difficult for them. It's the costs have increased for families. And for families with children, for example, they can't necessarily shop around um, mm -hmm. for goods from cheaper supermarkets. Uh, as they used to before um, the pandemic. So that could be more uh, costly for them, as well as not just the IT equipment, which is needed for communicating and is needed for education and home learning. But of course, keeping um, your credit up to date uh, on that IT equipment is an ongoing cost for you. And when you're financially struggling, we know that it's much more difficult because the stress of parenthood and the feelings of guilt and failure and shame mm -hmm. at not being able to give your child the decent education and the mm -hmm. decent upbringing you want to um, are, are very tr difficult for parents to to have to cope with um, and and damage them at the same time as their children. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that families are particularly concerned about are uh, is actually the future. So mm -hmm. that there's been some um, let up in terms of uh, people demanding payment, if you like. And we know that that's the case in terms of mortgage holidays, but it's also been the case in terms of eviction not being allowed um, mm -hmm. and so on. And uh, but some of those things are running out. Going in, in. Yeah. And so it's not just the struggles in the current situation. It's actually the fear of the future, um, mm -hmm. which can also gnaw away, I think, at people's peace of mind and. Uh, and their uh, ability to be to have a harmonious home. Mm. I think it's important to say that the Children's Commissioner has been talking um, about uh, having um, a revolution in early years childcare, really, uh, and saying that we should be putting much more investment into the early years, um, that we should have 30 hours of free childcare without conditions mm. um, for two, three and four year olds and that there should be 15 hours for one-year-olds as well. Um, mm -hmm. And that, you know, investing in children and investing in care, mm -hmm. uh, both for children and for other people, should be a key part of the recovery plan now. It's, uh, it's very frightening when you have a first child and you're all alone and they won't settle. Perhaps we should be prepared a bit more even at school. <laughs> I mean, some, some families, when you live together, you it almost comes because you've always got an auntie or, or somebody who's always got a, a, a young baby. But as families have sort of spread out, you're not learning that from your home environment. I think there are two, two things there that are really important. And, um, and the social isolation, which we were talking about earlier, is exactly what you're describing there. And as you say, it can affect uh, any new mother, in fact, mm. fathers as well, I would say. Um, mm. uh, but particularly those with low incomes who can't afford to travel, for example, mm -hmm. to see their families as much, and they may be more scattered, as you say. Um, mm. But then I think it's important to know that, you know, we did have sure start centres, and we did have more sure start centres and more children's centres than there are now. And that was exactly the kind of place where mm. parents could go, and they were universal. It wasn't just for those people who had problems. They were universal, so people didn't feel picked out as having problems and being a failure. Um, so a Sure Start Children's Centre would be a fantastic place for people to go to share those issues and to say, I'm not alone, I'm mm. not a failure. 
Um, mm. Somebody else has got the same problems as me. Let's share our experiences. Let's share our problems and our solutions as well. And the second thing is, I think, is public spaces. So if you're cooped up with children by yourself in an upstairs flat, then a public space like public parks um, mm. is, is, again, absolutely crucial. Mm. And I mm. think the the importance of public space and the importance of not allowing that public space to be all privatised um, is, is something else that we've learnt during this pandemic and particularly that we've learnt as being important for children.